Hey everyone, I'm Sue Brooke. I'm so excited that you're here today for Networking for Introverts. Um, I am a self-proclaimed introvert. I know that and I am in a lot of ways. I was that little girl in school when I was a little girl that never said two words. In fact, I went to my 30 year class reunion, oh my gosh, 10 years ago, my 40 years this year. And I remember going there and talking to people and dancing on tables and all kinds of having fun stuff. And, and my friends were like, you didn't say two words in high school. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I said, I know I was so shy. Like it wasn't really that long ago that I became, I decided I wanted to be a speaker. Um, and which was a huge outside the comfort zone for me, even though I was a teacher for little kids before that was my past life. I could talk to kids, <laughs> but then having to talk to adults was always um, really, you know, it was really scary for me. So I had to get really out of my comfort zone to do that. And now I absolutely love it. So today, what I'm going to talk about is called, like I, I named it Networking for Introverts. And I'm going to tell you why. So my backstory is this. Um, <laughs> I, I moved, I found out uh, about, gosh, it'll be three years in, uh, three years in July, I can't believe it, where I discovered that I had a sister through Ancestry DNA. Yes, I had no clue that I had a sister. Um, there's it's an awesome story. We were in Women's World Magazine and radio shows and things like that. It was pretty cool. Um, I won't get into the whole story, but the long story short of it is uh, I have this amazing sister. This was the day we met. Um, and we did not plan the outfits at all. That was us. Um, she's pretty awesome. So <laughs> here's why I'm telling you this story, not because it's just a really cool story, but the fact is this, I came up to visit her. I was living in Southern California at the time of this, and she lives in Northern California in a little town called Sebastopol in a beautiful Sonoma County by Santa Rosa. So I came up and visited a few times and she said, well, why don't you move here? And I said, well, I don't know anybody and where am I going to live? And here I am. I moved up to beautiful Sonoma County and I moved in with her and we had fun for the first couple of weeks. And then she said, Sue, I have to go to work now. <laughs> You're going to have to figure it out on your own. So here I was in this brand new community. I didn't know a single person. I barely knew my own new sister, right? And I had to figure out how I was going to meet people, how I was going to get my business started up here. And um, I was like, okay, I'm just, I, it's not, they're not going to come knocking on my door. So I'm going to have to figure it out. So here's what I did. I am actually going to go through the steps, the exact steps that I did to right now <laughs> after, you know, gosh, you know, being here for I've been here, I moved here in November. So two years ago, a little over two years ago, I moved here. Now, literally, like after just a few short months of moving to this new community, there are so many people who know me and uh, everywhere I go, I mean, there's people that lived, grew up in this community, like my sister who say, my gosh, you know more people than I do. And um, so I'm actually gonna teach you the steps that um, I used to, to get known up here. And actually now I literally every week I get referrals, I get people calling, asking how they can work with me. And it's pretty darn amazing. So here's the thing. I'm gonna try to fix something here. I am not, there we go. <laughs> All right, so I'm not gonna do a PowerPoint today. And there's a reason for that. I just, uh, I decided I just want to talk to you and I want to really give you the step by step. So I hope you have some paper and a pencil because I'm going to go through and I'm going to give you how many about 18 uh, steps to a system I created to get to where I am today to where I have a completely referral based business. I, I love networking the things I do to do that. Um, I make it super, super fun. And so I'm going to give, I'm also going to share some tools that I use and um, all kinds of cool things. So here we go. Um, number one, the first thing that you have to do before you even think about getting out there and starting to meet people and networking is you gotta figure out who you want to meet. Who do you wanna meet? Okay, write that down. Number one, who do you want to meet? Now, what I tell people is this, you need to figure out Actually, there's two people that you need to meet. <laughs> and I'm just gonna give you my examples, what I do, but it's gonna, you're gonna have to think about it for your own business and your own um, life. So, because my 
avatar. And I'm going to explain what an avatar is. If you don't know what an avatar is, an avatar is your most profitable, I call it your most profitable avatar. That is the a representation of your absolutely ideal client, the, perf the perfect person that you want to work with in your business. And ideally, it's going to be the most profitable one, <laughs> the one that's going to pay you, <laughs> the one that's going to help you um, and be able to pay you. Or there's another avatar. The other avatar is a referral partner. So I'm going to get into that. So you have to figure out who you want to meet. Now I'm going to give you a link to a webinar that I did with an amazing man named John Limbacher. John has is a great friend of mine. He's worked with the biggest companies in the world. And uh, there's a webinar. You can find it by going to the domain name makemoneywhileisleep.com. Makemoneywhileisleep.com. If you go to that, it actually goes to a page on my website with a webinar that I did with him. And what you're going to learn in that webinar is kind of how to, how to um, dig a little deeper and how to find your most profitable avatar and then how to be, make a successful business from that. So number one is to find who you want to meet. Now, my story is this. I wanted to meet business owners, okay? I help people with their businesses. I love helping people start their businesses, grow their businesses, marketing, helping people write books. Um, my best avatar, the people that I wanted to meet were business owners. So number one was who I wanted to meet. I knew I wanted to meet business owners. And number two, is you got to figure out where they are. <laughs> so where do they hang out? So number two is figure out where they hang out. So do your research, figure out who you want to meet and how and where they hang out. Now, business owners, where do they hang out? So my personally, I knew that the business owners are where they are at chamber mixers, right? They are at um, referral um, based like networking kind of uh, groups like BNI, those kind of things. Um, women in business. I loved working with women. So I want, there's a lot of women's groups of women who are in business up here. So I found like professional women's groups. Okay. So those are the things I did. So a uh, meetup, meetup is an awesome place to meet people. And meetup has so many different niches that let's say, okay, so let's say that you're in the kid business, okay? I have a client who is a tutor. He's, I'm, I've helped him start a tutoring business. So he can go to the networking things and, and chamber mixers and all of that kind of stuff because some of those people might have kids and then there's people that can refer him, but he is going to meet up groups. He's going to meet up groups where families are that have kids, okay? So you have to figure out where your pr most profitable avatars are. Um, I have another client who is in the building industry. Okay, well, um, actually two. They are going out to things like builders exchange places and, and um, association meetings. Uh, if you really want to get in front of insurance people, I have someone that um, wants to get in front of certain insurance people and build relationships with them. So they go to insurance association meetings. So you have to figure out in your life and your business where the best place they are. Number one, again, who you want to meet. Number two, where you want to meet them. Okay, got that? Number three, <laughs> you got to think before you go out there and do anything, you got to get your intention and your mindset straight. Okay. Here's the biggest thing. Now, I hope I'm not talking too fast here because I have a lot of content I want to give you and I don't want to keep you here all day because I can literally talk about this all day. <laughs> all right. Number three is this. When you're going to get your intention before going out there, you know who you want to meet. You know where you want to go. Now, when you get there, you got to know what you're doing. <laughs> you got to know where your mind is and what your intentions are for this. So here's the thing. I'm gonna give you, this is probably the most important thing that you're gonna learn on here, one of the most important things. You're going to meet different kinds of people. Here's the biggest mistake I see when people go networking. They go out there and they think that they're gonna to go to this networking event and sell their stuff to everybody, okay? Maybe they have a, a face cream that they are selling, okay? I'm just making that up. So they would just think, I'm gonna sell that to every single person in this room. Well, that is absolutely the wrong mindset, okay? You're not going to these places to sell people anything. 
I, it's funny when I, when I speak and we don't, I always ask this question. I ask a room full of business owners, for example, I say, <laughs> how many of you um, go to networking events to buy things? And not once have I ever had anybody raise their hand, <laughs> tell me that they go to networking events to buy things. Nobody. Okay. So then I say, well, why are you going there selling things? How many of you going there to sell things? And everybody raised their hand. I want to sell stuff. Okay. Well, that, nobody's there buying. Does that make sense? It's almost, it's the same as news uh, letters, like emails. I go, how many people love emails? And pe nobody raises their hand. And I say, how many of you send out emails? Well, everybody raise their hand. It's like, think about um, what you're doing. So here's the thing. There are two kinds of people that you're going to be. Now, one of the people that you're going to meet, I call it the contact buckets. I have like a little, uh, a little thing that has on the top, it says contacts. And then on one side, it has a bucket. It's a small bucket, but it's a bucket called prospects. Okay. So when you're going to these events, you might meet some prospects. You might be having a conversation, telling them about your face cream or whatever it is that you, you do or what you have. And they might go, oh my gosh, that sounds great. And they might become a prospect. It is possible. Okay. So, but that's kind of a small bucket. Um, people don't like to hear this, but not everyone is your avatar. Not everyone is. It's funny. I've got some people in the skincare industry and, and one of their go-to things they say is when I say, who's your most ideal client? And they say, anyone with skin. And the thing is, the, the honest truth is, yeah, is the person that's drunk underneath the, the you know, the bridge it, who's, you know, how, some guy there, is he your perfect avatar? Well, no. Well, he has skin. Well, you said anyone with skin. So you really got to think about who it is. So kind of getting off on a tangent there. I always have mo so much bonus material that I throw in. Okay. So you might meet a prospect that could turn into a customer. Okay. But there is a much bigger ocean of fish out there. And that is the other side, which is a gigantic bucket, which is a referral bucket. I call it my referral bucket. So those are referral partners. So when you're going out there, think about this. Would you rather go out there and try to find one person, one person, one person, one person to sell to over and over and over again? Or would you rather make a contact with someone that knows a lot of people that's going to promote your th stuff for you. Okay. Well, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You want to do that. One guy that I know, um, I had a long conversation with him. They do restoration um, projects for homes and uh, things like, you know, if there's a flood or a fire and there's smoke damage and things like that. So he wants, what they do is they go in and they fix all that. So, instead of going out and trying to find people that need that, which would be really hard and a lot of work, he wants to find insurance agents that he's going to build relationships with. So they will tell everybody because they're the ones that get the people that are calling going, oh, my house just, you know, there was a fire and there's smoke in there in the house. They're going to go, well, you need to call this guy. So isn't that better? So your mindset, and I'm spending a lot of time on this one because it's super duper important. When you're going to these, wherever you're going or whoever you're meeting, figure out who would be a good referral partner for you because that could turn into lots and lots of customers, right? So you're not out there meeting 3,000 people, especially if you're an introvert <laughs> and you don't want to meet one person at a time. You could just meet one person that's going to tell a lot of people. And I... It's funny, I've been trying to figure out, I got to do a little more research. Like each person knows so many people. I heard, I've heard 250, I've heard 800, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is every person knows a lot of people. So that's really, really important. So take that one away with you for sure. Okay, so that was number three. Number four. All right, now you're there. You know who you're meeting, you're in this place, and you know that you're going to start going out to find people. So here's what I do. So one of my favorite things, oh, oh here's another resource for you. Um, Ms. Dr. Ivan Meisner, uh, he is the founder of BNI, um, huge, huge networking group that's all over the entire world. And he's amazing. I heard him speak at a conference um, a year or so ago. 
and his books, he's written lots of books on this kind of thing. And I love what he says. One of the, one of the things that I took away from what he teaches is when you walk into a networking group or event, let's say it's a mixer. Okay. Because that's pretty much a, a big thing that most people do go stand back, look around the room, look around and see who's there. Okay. I always see the person sitting in the corner or all by themselves or maybe over there eating or having a glass of wine and you can just tell <laughs> when people are uncomfortable, which quite a few people are. I like to go talk to those people. That's my personal preference. I like to go find the person that looks a little bit lost, a little bit shy, and I want to go talk to them. Okay, you can also, like I said, Ivan Meissner has a lot of great ideas on how you can tell if there's closed groups of people talking, you don't want to infiltrate those. Um, there's a lot of things about that, but find someone that the number four here is find someone to connect with. Okay, make a connection with somebody. Now, your goal is not to go meet every single person in the room, okay? Not every single person in the room. Um, I'm sure you all know that one guy who's running around going, here's my business card, I do this, I do this, here's my business card, can I have your business card? And it's like this little business card collector that goes around and is just doing this. I'm, I always get at least one or two of those. So don't be that guy. <laughs> so find someone to connect with, start a conversation. Of course, if you're at a networking group, and I'm, work, I'm using that because I think most of the people that wanted to come on this um, webinar today feel funny going to some of these networking events. So make a connection with that person. Now, there's a lot going on usually, especially at mixers. Uh, so you're not gonna get into deep conversations. You're not going to get to know that person on a deep level at all. That is not the intention. You wanna make a connection. You wanna say, hey, um, I always like to give a compliment and usually it comes kind of natural for me, but let's say someone has a really cool shirt on or their hair looks really cute or whatever it is, you know, go and, and say something to them, you know, make a little, little small talk, whatever, and make a connection. And I always like to say, well, what, what do you, you know, ask them a little bit about, you know, you have a business. Wow. And then I like to ask like, what made you start your business? But again, you don't really want to get into a lot of that stuff at the mixer. You just want to make a connection. Now, I'm going to give you my secret sauce. So first of all, be genuinely interested in them before I get into my steps that I do. I want you to make sure you're genuine, genuinely interested in the person, okay? Um, it's funny. I went to, to something the other day and some guy came up and I think he was like a landscaper or something. And he's like, here, I do landscaping. And he was just, it was like just all about him, all about him. He didn't ask anything about me. I don't even have a house. Like I'm not, I don't need a landscaper. So he didn't even take the time to ask who I was or, or get to know me at all. There was no connection made whatsoever. So um, make a connection with someone. Now here is what I do. All right. Now I have a little secret. So um, are you ready for my secret? <laughs> All right, I have a special system that I created because what you wanna do is you're going to make that connection and then you have to have a follow-up system. So write that down. I, I, I guess I didn't give you the number four was making a connection. Number five is be genuinely interested in that person. No selling, no selling. And then number six is the one I was just saying, create a follow-up system, a follow-up system. This is so important because of this. Most people I say, how many of you love to follow up? Okay, and nobody ever raises their hand. Well, I'd love to follow up. What my system I'm gonna show you right now is so seamless and so much fun that you want to, okay? <laughs> so here's the bottom line. People do business with people they what? Know, like, and trust but there's one more that people forget to put. People do business with people they know, they like, they trust. That's what you're trying to get them to do. No like, and you're, you aren't gonna be able to build the trust right away, but you, there's something you can do to get them to go, ooh, I wanna know more. But the fourth one is, if they remember you. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so, such a big deal. It's so funny, people think 
I, they really believe this. People really think that people are thinking about them all the time. <laughs> I have a cup, a, a mug that someone gave me a while ago that said, you wouldn't worry so much about what other people thought about you if you knew how little they did. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to meet the people at this networking thing. The minute you walk away from them, and definitely the minute they get in the car to go home, they have forgotten about you. They've completely forgotten about you. So it is your job, yours, not theirs, not the people that put on the event. It is your job to make sure they remember you and that you follow up, okay? So I have a fun way to do that. Bonus tip here, <sighs> put your photo on your business card. I needed to make sure I threw that in here because the biggest mistake people make is they do not put their photo on their business card. Now, maybe you're the person that, realtors are awesome, they are very smart, they know that they need to have people remember their face because there's so many realtors out there, right? So you need to be the same way. If you're not a realtor and you're doing something else, I'm telling you, people do business with people they know, they like, they trust. Trust is a key word. People aren't going to trust you if they can't see your eyes, okay? And having a photo helps them see you and know, like, trust, remember, right? They're going to remember you. How, I, I don't have my stack of business cards here, but <laughs> I'm going to do a whole seminar on just business cards. Usually you go home with a stack of business cards, right? So you have a stack of business cards and you're going through, and if there's no photo, most of the time I'm like, oh, I can't remember what that person looked like, of course. So then I go on Facebook or LinkedIn and I search for them and I go, oh yes, now I remember what they look like. Anyway, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent there, but please put your picture on your business card because those people forgot about you. They're going home. You want them to, at least if they're going through their cards, remember who you are. So now to my system. Here's another thing I love to do. This is the first step in my follow-up system. Okay, this is number <laughs> six. Oh, no, sorry, six. number seven. Take a photo, all right? Take a photo. I usually say this. This is just my personal way to do it. You have to figure out your own. I'm like, you know, I don't want to forget what you look like. Let's take a selfie. And I just go, hey, let's take a picture. I don't think I've ever had anybody refuse me doing that. Um, I usually take a selfie. If it's something where maybe there's a couple of us talking um, and there's three of us talking around, I'll say, hey, let's take a picture so we remember this time. That is really a big deal, okay? <laughs> um, take a photo. So I take the phone and I take a photo. Now I'm gonna give you my secret tips. All right, I have an app on my phone. I'm gonna see if I can, talk. oh, yes, I have an app on my phone that looks like this. So I'm gonna share it because I have my phone here and actually it's on here. So I'm going to share my screen here. I'm gonna just show you what I do. Um, this is my phone app. I have it right here. And if you look down where underneath the A, it says send out cards, I'm gonna click that, okay? This is my favorite, my favorite follow-up system on the planet. So I'm just gonna show you how I use it. Um, and then if you don't know about send out cards or whatever, I'll give you the information at the end. So don't worry about that right now, but I just want to show you how, what I do. So I go up to the top, I've taken a picture of someone, right? And I click the top where it says build your own. So what I'm doing right now is I'm building a card. Okay. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to put the picture that I took on the front of the card. So I create the card. I put a photo. Um, now, I did not take a picture here, so <laughs> let's see if I have one. Oh, I'm just going to go. This is uh, my friend, Rhonda, who just got a great award for being a top real estate agent. So I'm just going to use this picture for now. So you can put the picture right there on the front of the card. So I usually put the picture of us that we, um, the selfie that we just took, and then on the inside of the card, I can go in and I can create a message. So I can create a color on here um, and you can choose a font. You can actually send in your own handwriting and you can have your own font in here with your own handwriting and your own signatures. And I usually just um, write a quick message, you know, I'll, I'll just write Tyranda, you know, it was so great meeting you. Whoops. <laughs> um, it's a little bit slow on this end. 
it was so great meeting you. So I'm, you know, I'm not going to write the whole message in here because I'm not going to put it in there, but you put your message in here and then you sign it at the end. And in this one, you can actually put, have your signature in there. And then on the back of the card is where you can brand it. So I have all my stuff with my branding and my, my information on it. And then I can actually send the card. So I go to the end of the thing and I do this right on the spot. Like I, now watch this. This is super key. Okay. This is so amazing. So if I do not have the person that I just met in there, which I don't normally, I don't have their contacts. I can go to click new contact here. And guess what? I hand them my phone usually, or I'll type it in myself. I usually just say, Hey, give me your mailing address. I'm going to send this picture to you. Okay. Nobody's ever refused giving me their mailing address. If you look in here, you can get their email, you can get their phone number, you can get their birthday, anniversaries, you can have all kinds of stuff that you can get in there. Okay. So that's what I do. So on here, I, whoops, I'm hitting the wrong one. So I can go in and I can actually find Rhonda. I'm going to go in and edit this message. I'm doing this in the interest of time right now. I can go in and edit the message. I can continue. And then it says free. I can, if you want to talk to me about it, I'll explain that. And there, I just sent her a card. That was, that's my follow-up system right there. I'm going to stop my screen share here. Hopefully I will be able to do that. Sorry. Give me just one second. <laughs> uh, technology, I tell you. So, stop the share. Okay. So I'm back. So that's my follow-up system. So I take a photo, then I, um, create a card either on the spot. Now, you might not have the time. Maybe it's really crazy and you don't have time. If you can figure out the system to take their card and, and remember their picture, you can always make the card like when you're on the car in your car before you leave. But I usually do it right on the spot. I practiced enough times that it's super easy for me. So I take a photo, I get their contact information. That is number eight, get their contact information. If you can't do the whole card thing the way I just did it, um, at least get their contact information, get their phone number, um, you know, whatever you can, get their business card and uh, write a little note on it. Oh, here's a bonus tip too. If you have their business card and uh, you want to write a note on it, I have a friend that taught me this. Um, have a Sharpie in your purse or wherever, if you're a guy, <laughs> have a Sharpie somewhere because you want to write a note on the card so you remember who they are remember that word remember um if if you're in a situation where you can't do what i just did and you can't get their information that way then write something on the card use a sharpie because some of those uh, cards have like a coating on it and a pencil or a pen doesn't really work so anyway that's a little bonus tip for you <laughs> so get their contact information is number eight and then guess what i want you to do i want to oh back up send them what I call this card that I just sent is a nice to meet you card. Okay. So I usually put in there something like this. Hi Rhonda. It was so great meeting you at the chamber mixer. Um, I had a blast. I can't wait to learn more about you and your business. I would love to meet for coffee. Call me when you get this. Let me know it arrives safely. Something like that. Sue with my phone number. And of course the back of the card has all my stuff on it. I don't even have business cards anymore because I use this system and they're going to get the card in the mail in a couple of days. So um, that's my follow-up system, but it's called a nice to meet you card. So number six, create a follow-up system. Number seven, take a photo. Number eight, get their contact information. And number nine, send a nice to meet you card. Okay. If you don't, use the app and you don't do it the way I did it, you can have cards that you can go and handwrite and put all the, do all the stuff and like the stamp and put it in the mail if you want to, but no matter what, send a nice to meet you card because here's what happens with that person. They've gone to this networking event. Maybe they're an introvert like you and they go home and they're like, Oh, I just got through that event. And I have all these business cards and that was overwhelming and they're off to bed and then they go off to their day for the next few days. Okay. If you, if you can set up the one-on-one -on -one appointment at the event, if you've made a good enough connection, do that. Um, but in my experience, it's usually that type of thing. It's really hard to set up a one-on-one -on -one at the event. Now you could be in another, um, 
maybe you're at a Starbucks and you meet someone. Okay, this works anywhere, by the way. Um, and you can set up a one-on-one, -on -one, definitely do that. Okay, but let me go back. We're talking about the networking things right now. So the person's going home, they went through, got through there, the next day they completely forgot about everybody at the event and they're going off on their life. Couple days later, they get the mail, there is a card from you. And it's like, wow, that's crazy. Okay, I'm telling you, not everybody at the event is gonna send a nice to meet you card. You're probably gonna be the only one doing that. So guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna get the card. So here's an example of, this is like a card that uh, was sent to my friend. And she's gonna go, oh my God, I remember Sue. And then she's gonna look at the back and go, oh, I'm gonna call her and thank you for this card, okay? Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm telling you, I put in there, call me when you get this. I wanna make sure it arrives safely. Sometimes what I do is actually, and this is a little bonus thing too, I'll send like a box of brownies. Like if they're really somebody that you really like, I might send a box of brownies or you might send a gift or something. There's, there's a lot of things you can send in there, but the nice to meet you card is usually enough. So they're looking at the card going, oh my God, I remember that was, cool. I gotta call her. Yes, I wanna set up the one-on-one. -on -one. So the next one is number 10 was set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting, okay? All right. Here comes the, t the meat of everything. <laughs> all right, so you've gone to the network, you went through all of that, you made it through, it was kind of fun, and you sent the cards, and you probably forgot about them too, right? <laughs> so here's the next thing. We're gonna talk about that one-on-one -on -one meeting. Your job now is to really think about these people that you met. Okay, you're gonna know if it's someone that was a potential prospect or a potential referral partner or a potential friend, you know, a friend, which could be a referral partner, right? When I first moved here, I wanted to meet friends too. And business owners are great friends for me because they get me. <laughs> so I wanted to meet other business owners um, and some of the influencers in town because I wanted to make friends with them. So you need to start building the relationship. I don't know how to, uh, <laughs> to say how important this is, other than it's the most important thing in your business is building relationships, not throwing stuff out on Facebook and spamming people with your stuff and posting on other comments and doing all these things to irritate people. Build relationships, take it offline, okay? Um, by the way, I'm going to go to this, the, it's coming up here in a second. Number 11 is build a relationship. So you, when you're building the relationship, you're discovering the possibilities, right? So let's say you meet them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you meet them one-on-one -on -one and you that's when you're gonna try to hold the conversation and make it mostly about them. Now I'll tell you, if you do that, if you say, wow, I wanna hear about your business, tell me, like be really, really interested. Tell me your story. Oh my God, I love that question. Tell me your story. Now think about it. If you're introverted and you're still a little nervous or shy being around this person that you just met, make them talk. <laughs> it's better if you make them talk because what's going to happen is people love to talk about themselves. They do. I don't care who you are. You love to talk about yourself and you love to talk about your business. So ask them questions like, wow, oh, what's your story? What, how did you start this business? What made you get excited about it? And that's going to build their trust with you. And they're going to really, really like you because most people like to just puke their stuff out all over everybody. And um, I have a person that, oh my gosh, when I first moved here, I'll never forget. She, I swear, I had four one-on-one -on -one coffee dates with her. Every single time I met with her, all she wanted to do was get me to join her business and try to sell me her thing that I had absolutely no interest in. I told her every single time, this is not exciting for me. It's not what I want to do, but I'm happy to share it with my, my, uh, my network. I'm happy to refer you, but it got to the point where every time we met, that's all she wanted to do was sell me. And so now do you think I'm going to refer her? No, I'm not going to refer. And did she ever thank me for meeting her? That is actually number 12. Send people thank you cards. Oh my gosh. When I was, had my own business, my, my big business, my claim to fame is my, no, is my, um, my uh, after school program. I had a tutoring, I had a school. It was like 5,000 square feet. I had 
a ton of employees. I had students and parents and kids, so many people to keep track of. And two and a half hours away, I had another location. So I was busy, like no one was busier than I was. Plus I was out networking, right? And people would want to meet me for coffee. Well, if I ever did find time, which was usually lunch, because I had to eat, I never got anybody thanking me for, for taking time out of my extremely busy schedule to meet with them. People are busy. You know it, right? You're busy. You are super busy. So send a thank you card. Meet the people in person. That's number 10. Number 11 is build the relationship. Okay. And number 12 is send a thank you card. Now, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this because let me tell you, I think it's less than 3% or 2% of business people send thank you cards. Okay. You need to stand out from people. Now, being an introvert, you probably don't want to be the person in the limelight. That's usually what happens. Introverts say, oh, I don't want to be the person in the limelight. You know how you can stand out? Send them a thank you card. I promise. Send them a birthday card. Do things like that to make them smile. So let me talk about thank you cards for a second. Here's another resource for you. The resource is called, I want you to read this book, uh, Joe Girard, it's G-I-R-A-R-D, How to Sell Anything to Anybody. I'm going to tell you a very quick story about Joe Girard. Joe Girard, uh, boy, I just finished actually reading his book. I've talked about him many times. I, his book is amazing. He was a child who was beat by his father every day in the basement um, and was told he was never going to amount to anything. He has an, a crazy story from childhood. Well, fast forward for him. This was way, way back. In the 70s, he became an auto uh, salesperson. A sale, he sold cars, okay? And he ended up with what he did, his system, earned him the, uh, he was in the Guinness Book of World Records for holding, for selling the most cars in a year for like, oh my gosh, he, he held that record until very recently. This was way back in the 70s. I don't even know how many years, but a lot of years he held the Guinness Book of World Records for selling the most cars. And in his career, he sold like, I don't know, 13,000 cars, something like that. And this is how he did it. And he talks about how he did it. And believe it or not, the person who broke the record recently follows his, <laughs> followed what he did. And he sent thank you cards. He actually sent more than just thank you cards. He would meet people, any people, not just people that he, um, not just people that he sold a car to, but anybody and their families. He would send birthday cards. He'd send holiday cards. Thank you. Appreciation. How are you doing? Like he just did that. And he sent, I think someone told me he sent like 13 cards a year to every single person. And it got so uh, crazy that he was selling so many cars and had so many people lined up to want to buy cars from him that he had he hired people to uh, write the addresses on the cards and, and handwrite a message and lick the stamp and, and all that and take it to the post office. This is way before the technology I just showed you. But that's how he was so super famous and how he sold so many cars and had such a successful career. Two other people I want you to write down, Tom Hopkins. Tom Hopkins, multi-billion dollar real estate industry. Um, he, his whole thing, he has a thing actually in his book called the thank you note habit. And he sent 10 thank you notes every night before he went to bed. Okay. Tom Hopkins, huge successful person. If you're in real estate, I know you know who Tom Hopkins is. And the third person I want you to write down is Mary Kay. Mary Kay, billion dollar, I don't even know how many billion dollar industry Mary Kay is. And her thing is, she tells all her reps to send, I think it's three thank you no, it's every night before you go to bed. It's if, if you want to be successful, do what successful people do. And I promise you, since I started doing this just a couple of years ago is really when I started. I mean, it was after I, I came here, I developed this. I promise you, it will change your life. Not only will it change your business, but it will change you as a person because it makes you a better person to send these cards out and make sure they're heartfelt. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to know. Oh my gosh, our time is going. I just love to tell, talk about this stuff. Okay, so send a thank you card is number 12. Number 13, the thing that I, I forgot, I kind of put it in the wrong order, 
I always add the person on social media. Okay. I'm kind of, that's a little out of order. What I, my system was, I would meet them, I would send the card. And then be, when I got in the car to go home or when I went home, the first thing I did is found, found them on social media. My favorite um, is Facebook. I also will add them on LinkedIn. I'm not a big LinkedIn. Um, I'm on, I'm not on there that much. That's my business is more um, localized, but uh, well, not necessarily, but <laughs> LinkedIn isn't really my, the touchy feely thing that I love. I love Facebook. And I love Facebook because of this. So once you meet them and I add them on social media, which is Facebook, and you might, if you're an Instagram person, follow them on there, whatever social media platform you want. I love Facebook because of this. What do people love, love, love to post on Facebook? Photos, right? They want to, they post their favorite photos on Facebook, always. They post pictures of their pets. They post pictures of their grandkids. They post pictures of them on their vacation. They post pictures when, when their pet dies or when a, when a family member dies. Um, someone told me once, you can write this down, never miss a birthday or a funeral. Never, never miss a birthday or a fun funeral. Write that down and put a star by it. Always send cards for those things. People don't get birthday cards anymore, okay? It's, you have no idea how many times I've sent a birthday card and they call me and say, you're the only person that sent me one. I mean, hello, <laughs> things are coming back. So that was kind of out of order, but um, friend them on social media. Now, um, 14, number 14, create a stay in touch top of mind system, whichever way you want to call it, a, a way to stay in touch with these people and to stay top of mind. Again, people don't are forgetting about you. They're not thinking about you every day. So once you met them in person and you sent them a thank you for meeting, meeting you, um, you're going to decide. If, or that it could be a person that you just like everything clicks and you're just going to become best friends and you're going to meet all the time and all that's going to happen. My friend Sherry is on here right now. That kind of happened with us. <laughs> we met for the first time and then we just started. I mean, it was like easy to stay in touch with her because we started actually working together, but not very few people are going to be like that. So you might meet them in person and then they go away. And of course, you're both going off to your daily lives, the things that are going on, you're gonna be busy, they're gonna be busy. So you need to stay in touch with them. So you need to stay in touch. It's kind of the same as a follow-up system, but it's more, it's more of just staying top of mind, you know, sending that birthday card, sending a, a whatever kind of, you know, like, hey, how are you doing? Cards are my favorite. You can also, of course, you, should, you could call them once in a while, post on their Facebook, you know, comment, like, say, you know, post the picture that you took, you know, whatever it is, just stay top of mind with them. So the kinds of people that you want to stay top of mind with, prospects, potential customers, right? Obviously you want to do that. Um, customers, your actual customers that actually become customers, because you're going to get customers with this, you absolutely are. Um, your referral partners, people who refer you, okay? Um, and past customers. Now, very quick story. This is, this probably ripped my heart out here. So here's why it's so important to keep in touch with your past customers. So if you have a business or you're starting a business, you're going to have customers that come and go. Okay. Especially people like realtor, realtors who sell a house to someone. They're not probably buying a house every single day. So you have past clients, people that buy, sell cars, people that sell big things. They probably aren't buying that. They might not be your customer for a while, but remember they could refer you. So you want to stay in touch with them. You want to be top of mind. So if, let's say somebody comes up and says, you know, oh, I'm thinking about buy, selling my house. You want to be the person, if you're a realtor, for example, you want to be that person that goes, oh my gosh, you got to call my friend Rhonda or whatever. Okay. so. Um, the story is this, this is a realtor out of Arizona. Um, he posted this on Facebook, I think it was last year and it was right after Christmas time. And here's what he did. He had started in the system that I showed you, he was a card sender. So he was sending cards and he had, there's a whole CRM in that and the send out card system that you can put people's birthdays and their spouse's birthdays and all their stuff. So he put all of his current clients in there and he put all of his prospects in there and he was sending cards and doing the whole thing and you know 
a successful realtor. And so right before Christmas, he goes, oh, you know what? I never put my past customers in the system and I've never, I haven't been keeping in touch. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and send him a holiday card. <laughs> so he put all the, the people in there and he created a holiday card and he sent his holiday cards out to all of his past customers. Well, the picture that he posted on, um, on this, on Facebook, not, or last year, was a picture of all these envelopes that came back. Actually, I have one that came back to me um, with those big yellow things that say, return to sender, not here. <laughs> and he looked up all of, like he went, what is this? Like so many. And he went and found the addresses and the people and he looked them up in the MLS to say, well, why aren't they there anymore? And he found out that all of those people had sold that house that he had, you know, that they used to be in that he had their address for and bought other houses with different realtors. And then he actually figured out how much money he lost. He, it was like $2.5 million in sales that he lost because he didn't keep in touch with them. He could have been the realtor, you know, oh, I just made my heart, you know, just out of my test. It's so funny because I, my, my story is I love the new Beatles. I, I've owned seven new Beatles, Volkswagen new Beatles. Um, had one save my life, so I love them. They don't make them anymore, but I've owned seven of them. And here's the thing. I started thinking about this. I bought all those cars at different dealerships and different salespeople. Okay, why? Why did I buy every single one of those cars from different people? because no one stayed in touch with me. I get so mad. I'm actually kind of mad at them for not staying in touch with me because I'm telling you that first person that sold me my very first Volkswagen New Beetle, he would have been rich because I would have told everybody to go to that person. Okay, I don't remember who he is. I don't even remember who sold me my last car back uh, like two years ago. I forgot about him the day I bought my car because he never ever, I didn't get a thank you, nothing. So do you understand the power of thank you? I know I spent a lot of time talking about that, but it's so important. Okay, we're getting towards the end here. Number 15, here's a word you want to write down, appreciate. Everyone wants to be appreciated. So I've talked about past customers and keeping in touch. I've talked about your prospects and following up, right? But your current clients, appreciate them appreciate them thank them for being your customer send them gifts send them cards send them you know call them you know just do nice things for these people they're your customers your customers are your best best advertising i don't advertise i don't spend money on marketing the only thing i do is i send cards to people and i appreciate people and i do the best i can to stay in touch so appreciate number 15 is appreciate everyone because 85% of customers, people leave businesses because they don't feel appreciated. 85%. Crazy. I think it's probably more than that. Um, and the number one reason that people don't come back to, to you, like, you know, someone that bought a house, whatever, or um, the number one reason people don't refer you is because they forgot about you. They forgot. So stay in touch. If you're not, if you're introverted and you don't want to pick up the phone and call all the time, you know, there's texting, there's messaging, there's, there's social media and just, you know, those kind of things. But the card, the tangible touch, I'm telling you, I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. It's changed my life and it's changed my business. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. We're almost done. 16. Biggest thing I'm going to take, I want you to take away from today is this. <sighs> take this in. I really want you to listen to this. I don't care what you're doing, whatever it is, if you do the cards, if you do whatever it is to stay in touch. And I'm using the cards in this example because I've seen a lot of people mistake. When you send something out to appreciate someone, to send a birthday, to send a holiday, to thank people, anything you send out, you need to have only one intention, and that is only to appreciate them or thank them or send out kindness or love or I'm sorry for your loss. Only, your intention has to be only about that. 
you could not have the intention, if, you, if you're gonna send anything out to anybody in any way, shape or form, and your intention is to get business or get something back from them, I promise you it is not gonna work. It will never work. There is this energy in the universe that can feel it. I promise you, I've ha I have many stories. One is a realtor that, that he was brand new and he said, I'm gonna send cards to everybody in my neighborhood um, for 4th of July. And so I helped him craft a message. It was a long, it was very hard to craft, to not make it a marketing message. He kept wanting to make it a marketing thing. And I said, no, you just want to say, Hey, I'm in your neighborhood. I would love to meet you. I'd love to find out more about you, whatever it is, you know? Um, and he sent out the card and two weeks later he said, this doesn't work. This is a terrible idea. He said, not one person listed their house with me. And I said, that's why because his intention when he sent those cards was to get something back and it doesn't work i promise you send out with no intention other than kindness love appreciation caring and i promise you're going to get it back three bazillion fold like i'm not even joking it really works that way try it and number 17 we have two more here this is, I wish I came up with this, but I think this is an Ivan Meisner one or a Cody Bateman one, the founder of the card company, sent out cards. Don't ever ask for a referral. Deserve it. Don't put on your cards. Don't put on your backs of your cars. Don't put on your business cards. Don't put on holiday cards for heaven's sakes. Nothing about the highest compliment I could receive is a referral. Please don't do that. Don't ask for a referral, just deserve it. People will refer you because they know you, they like you, they trust you, they remember you, and they know you're an amazing person that just sends them love all the time. I promise you, it will change your life. Now, number 18 is have fun. I have fun every single day. It is fun for me to send cards. I never get sick. I just posted something that I promise. I, I send cards every single day. I am happy. I'm positive. I wake up. I do it right before I go to bed. At night, I send positive, happy cards to people. I'll go through Facebook. I'll find some cool picture that I can tell is super special to them. I know they're not going to print it, so I'm going to put it on a card and send it. I just sit in my bed on my, with my app on my phone, and I send cards. I honestly, I'm telling the truth. I never get sick. I can't remember the last time I was. I don't get colds. I am happy. I'm positive. People tell me I inspire them, and I know it's because I send out love and kindness every day, and it's changed my life, it's changed my business, and I promise you, it'll change yours. I, I, I dare you, <laughs> I challenge you to try it because it will totally change your life. So that is my presentation for today. Wow, I did it almost exactly one hour. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to tell you. I would love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Please contact me. I want to hear your story. I want to know about your business. It, that's my power. That's my, my energy that just my gasoline that gets me going is I love talking about to people about their business, giving them ideas and just, you know, brainstorming and find out how I can help you. I'm actually probably the best referral partner that you can ask for. So I would love to meet you. So if anybody actually sent you to this webinar um, that uses send out cards by any chance, make sure you go back and talk to them because they will give you a code to go send a free card. If you came because of me or you randomly ran across this webinar, since it's a recorded one as well, please reach out to me. Um, my uh, address, my email address is sue at suebrook.com. Please add me on Facebook. Um, you can post a com actually email me. That would be great. Uh, you can call me 661-607-2805. Uh, and if you want to go send a free card, I'm going to give you the link right now. Just go to cardsfromsue.com. Cardsfromsue.com. If you go there, then you can actually, that's on your computer. Go to cardsfromsue.com and it'll be a little button that says send a card. Make sure you watch those videos. They're very short and they're very informative. 
and uh, send her a free card. And then you'll have a free account and you can try out the send out card system. Again, if you know someone in send out cards, please go to them and get their code because they will give you their own code um, because we are all affiliates. Um, next, if you wanna do it on your phone, then you can actually download the send out cards app and I'm gonna give you a special code to send a free card. The code, I think it'll say sponsor ID on there. The code to send a free card is 206-780. Again, it's 206-780. But please, if you have another send out cards person, I, I'm just, I wanna help everyone. So make sure you get their special code from them. So that is mine for today. I hope you enjoy the presentation and got a lot of value out of it. And please email me and uh, let's set up a time where we can talk and I'd love to get to know you. So thank you so much. Have a great day.